Hey everyone, welcome back to another perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be talking about some perfumes I have in my collection um, that have a rose note in there. Some of these I would consider to be really rose uh, dominant scents and other ones just have like a subtle hint of rose in there. Um, what I'll probably do is I will start talking about the most subtle rose scents and I will work my way up to the most, um, to the strongest rosy perfumes that I have. So get yourself comfortable and relax, grab a wee drink if you would like to. Today I'm just sipping on some water here to keep me nice and hydrated. And with that being said, let's get started with these rosy perfumes. Okay, so the first fragrance I'm going to talk about today is a beautiful springtime scent that I have in my collection. It's very sweet, it's very feminine to me, and it is none other than C. Fiori from Armani. Right here in this gorgeous pastel pink bottle. And um, like I said, I'm going to work my way up to the strongest rosy scents. So um, I'm starting with the most subtle ones and I would say that this one to me is more focused on those like fruity aspects and the vanillic sort of notes. Um, it does have a rose note in here but I would say that I um, primarily smell the other notes. This is such a beautiful fragrance. It's very pillowy soft, very creamy actually, kind of powdery, just so marshmallowy and like cloudy and dreamy. Very, very sweet. So there's black currants and green mandarin. Then we have neroli, rose, patchouli and oak moss, and then vanilla and white musk in the base notes. So um, this could be a nice option for you if you're looking for a fragrance with a rose note, but you don't want that rose to be too overpowering. Maybe you are new to rose fragrances in general and you're wanting to start with something really, really subtle. I would maybe give this one a try, especially if you're a fan of sweet perfumes. Um, I mean, really, this is probably up there with like the sweetest fragrances that you could get. So if you have a bit of a sweet tooth when it comes to fragrances, maybe give this one a try. Again, the rose isn't super prominent, but it is in there. And overall, this is just a really gorgeous fragrance for the springtime. And that is C. Fiori from Armani. The next fragrance I'm going to be talking about today is a new addition to my collection. It's a really gorgeous one, actually. And it is in an adorable bottle as well. And that is Classique the EDP from Jean-Paul Gaultier. And again, I would say this is an example of a fragrance that has a subtle hint of rose, but I wouldn't necessarily class this as like a super, super heavy rose scent. Now, um, the main accords of this fragrance, we have vanilla, amber, powdery, sweet, floral, rose, woody, rum, yellow floral, and warm spicy. And the notes themselves, we have rum, rose, and Sicilian mandarin in the top notes. We have orchid and narcissus in the middle notes. And in the base notes, we have vanilla, amber, tonka bean, and also sandalwood. So to me, you kind of get the most rose from this fragrance actually upon the first application. And then for the majority of the wear, it's kind of this sweet, woody, mm, aromatic, slightly incense kind of slightly spicy kind of fragrance. And the other thing with this fragrance, I would say it's a nice example of a perfume that has rose in there, but it's done in more of an edgy kind of way. So this fragrance to me has a bit of attitude about it. So to me, this fragrance is primarily a warm, slightly spicy, boozy, ambery, woody, vanilla type of scent, but with a subtle hint of that. Um, sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dog barking in the, in the background there. They got a new puppy and he's really very cute. Um, but yeah, so this is a fragrance with a subtle hint of rose and that is a classic, the EDP from Jean-Paul Gaultier. The next fragrance I have in my collection with a rose note is the new Musk Noir Rose from Narciso Rodriguez. And um, this is a gorgeous fragrance. I've been wearing it a lot. In fact, you might even be able to see the level there. Um, wow, yeah, that's been used quite a lot actually. 
Sorry about the dog barking. Maybe it sounds louder to me than it will to you, but hopefully it's not too annoying for you guys. Um, so yeah, I've really been enjoying this fragrance, but funnily enough, the thing I noticed about this one is even though they're calling it Musk Noir Rose, to me, I don't know if the rose is all that strong in here. You can definitely smell it, but the first thing I noticed about this fragrance is how similar I found it to the original Musk Noir. So I think if you already like Musk Noir, but you're looking for something a bit creamier and sweeter and less powdery, then you'd probably like this one. So I will just go through the main accords with you and then the notes. So, um... The main accords of this fragrance, we have musky, vanilla, rose, powdery, fruity, sweet, tuberose, white floral, citrus, and animalic. And um, the notes themselves, we have plum, bergamot, pink pepper, musk, rose, tuberose, and vanilla. I've got these super long nails on today, you guys, and um, sometimes trying to like grab hold of things, it's proving to be a little bit challenging, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll manage. <sighs> yeah, so this fragrance is really gorgeous to me, actually. You definitely still have that signature Narciso Rodriguez muskiness about it, but it is quite creamy to me, probably from the tuberose and the vanilla coming together. But like I say, to me personally, I don't know if I get an awful lot of rose, and that's why I'm mentioning this um, with the fragrances that are more subtle with that rose note, you know? Um, I would have almost expected this to smell like really different from the original Musk Noir, but actually they do have like the same DNA and they do smell quite similar to me. Different enough to have both, but still kind of similar. Um, but this is a really nice one. Um, I would say this fragrance is quite soft overall, so if you're looking for a Beast Mode fragrance, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one. So to me it is quite soft. Um, I don't know if it's less potent than the original Musk Noir, I haven't really like thought that much into it, I can't really remember if this one is weaker than the original, I'm not sure, but it's definitely on the softer side. And it, again, it has that nice subtle hint of rose, it's not too much, it's not super like floral or anything like that, so I think again if you're looking for a subtle hint of rose, um, maybe you're slightly scared of rose in perfumes. Funnily enough, I kind of was actually, like for the longest time I didn't really want to go for fragrances with rose because I was worried it would be kind of too strong and um, I never used to like rose in perfume at all, to be quite honest with you. Like I didn't, I didn't like the idea of a rosy scent, um, yeah, for whatever reason, but I have grown to really enjoy them. I remember the first fragrance I tried that actually um, changed my mind about Rose was the Black Perfecto from Guerlain, which I don't have anymore because the leather note kind of bothered me in the end, but I remember that was the fragrance that really wowed me and it kind of showed me that actually Rose can be done in loads of different ways and um, it can smell really nice, but anyway, so that one is Musk Noir Rose from Narciso Rodriguez, a gorgeous, sweet, musky, creamy fragrance and I've really been enjoying it. Next up today we have a favourite in my collection, you guys, this beauty here, Narciso Poudre from Narciso Rodriguez. And again, this is a fragrance that I would say has a subtle hint of rose, but it's not too much. Don't worry, we will get to the rose heavy scents later in the video, but I just wanted to start with some of the more subtle rosy scents to, um, to begin with, you know. And the main accords of this fragrance here, we have musky, white floral, woody, aromatic, powdery, sweet, rose, vanilla, balsamic, and warm, spicy. And the notes themselves, we have jasmine, Bulgarian rose, and orange blossom in the top notes. We have a heart of musk, and we have coumarin, cedar, vetiver, and patchouli in the base notes. So um, to me, this fragrance is primarily a very uh, woody, sweet, aromatic, musky kind of fragrance. And um, I think the floral notes in the top add a really gorgeous, soft sort of balance to the scent, just to stop it from being overly woody. 
So for sure, when you're smelling this fragrance out the bottle, you can get more of those florals. But like I say, um, the majority of the wear in the dry down, I get more of those like musky qualities, the sweet woodiness and things like that. And there definitely is like a powdery quality to this fragrance, which to be honest, I'm not really sure where that's actually coming from because I wonder if the powdery sort of nature is coming from the rose. I actually don't know. Maybe you could let me know in the comments uh, what you think that's coming from. But this, this certainly is a really gorgeous fragrance. It's one I've had in my collection for a really long time and um, it's a favourite of mine. <laughs> I'm just trying to get one of these. These nails are actually a little bit awkward sometimes, right? So I'm just going to spray a wee bit of this one here. Um, I kind of miss this scent actually. I've not been wearing it an awful lot lately, but I do actually miss it a fair bit. <sighs> yeah, you definitely get quite a bit of the rose when you first spray it. I can actually notice that now. So I can notice the rose when I first spray this fragrance, but certainly once it warms up on the skin and it kind of develops, I would say that fades quite a bit and you're left with that nice enveloping musky woodiness. But yeah, you do get quite a lot of the florals on the first application. And overall, this is just one of my favourite perfumes. It would definitely be a repurchase. Um, it's just so easy to wear. It's super feminine to me. Um, comforting. It's just very sensual as well. It's one of those really like empowering, uh, beautiful fragrances that almost it's reminiscent to me of natural beauty. This this perfume to me, it just reminds me of like very natural things, um, femininity, uh, goddess kind of qualities, I suppose. It's just absolutely stunning, you guys. And that is Narciso Poudre. Okay, so from this point on, I would say we are getting into the rose heavy scents. Um, for sure. So I'm just deciding what I'll mention next. So next up today we have um, Landry Tresor à la Folie from Longcom. This beauty here in this absolutely stunning diamond or ruby rather uh, kind of bottle. Now this perfume, it has a fair bit going on I would say. It's quite woody. You have your violet in here, you have your berry notes, you do have your rose as well. And um, overall, it's just this beautiful, very smooth, very um, alluring, quite sweet fragrance as well. Um, you do have quite a lot of benzoin vanilla, sort of like that sticky, moorish, warming kind of vanilla nature to it as well. You have a lot of that going on in here. Oh yeah, this fragrance is incredible. And actually, I would say, um, to be fair, the rose in here, it's very well blended. Again, if you're a little bit hesitant to go for a rose heavy scent, I would maybe have a, have a look at this one here because it's very well blended in here. It's slightly rosier than the previous ones I've mentioned, I would say, but it's still not overpowering to the scent. It's very well balanced. Um, in fact, Primarily, I would say that I get the, the warming benzoin notes with the vanilla, with the, with the red berries as well. So overall, it kind of reminds me of like Christmas baking, mulled wine, <sighs> cookies, cakes. You know, it has that gourmand sort of... Mm, yeah, it has that subtle gourmand aspect in there, but it's got the florals as well. The woody notes, the berries, again, it's quite well balanced and has a subtle hint of rose, but it's not too much. And that is uh, Landry Tresor à la Folie from Longcom. The next gorgeous rosy fragrance I am going to be talking about today is Longcom's Oud Bouquet, which I have a little decant of here courtesy of Chantelle Tiffany here on YouTube. She very generously uh, sent this over to me. I do have a fair bit of this fragrance left, actually. I don't reach for it an awful lot. So I've got this amount left here and I'm always <laughs> mesmerized by this, this juice. I mean, how beautiful is that? So um, Long Comes Oud Bouquet. This is a great example of like a rosy, oud, woody, sweet kind of fragrance. Um, it's very opulent, very, very luxurious, 
very strong. It's the kind of fragrance that I would wear if I wanted to um, draw attention to myself, if I wanted to smell um, <laughs> luxurious and just very extravagant, you know, it's one of those out there kind of fragrances. So the main accords, we have sweet, oud, rose, vanilla, amber, woody, lactonic, oh, lactonic, that's interesting, um, balsamic, nutty, and also powdery. And the notes themselves, we have oud, praline, rose, vanilla, gayak wood, and kopahu balm. Um, and yeah, this is a really, really rich, intoxicating scent. It really means business, you guys. It's not messing around. I don't actually know if I want to spray this because um, I don't want to waste my little decant and also it's very strong, so <laughs> I can smell it perfectly fine just this way, you know. It's a really stunning one. So if you're a fan of really, really sweet, woody, slightly syrupy fragrances and you're interested in trying fragrances with a rose note, I would give this one a try. Um, I don't know if you can buy samples. I'm not sure, but it's a really, really beautiful fragrance. I don't know if I'll be picking up a full bottle because I have another perfume in my collection that I will talk about next, actually, that I kind of prefer to this in many ways. But anyway, that's uh, Long Comes Oud Bouquet, a really gorgeous, rich, sweet, syrupy, woody and rosy scent. So next up today, we have this beauty here, Kayali Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. And um, this is actually the perfume that I uh, prefer to Oud Bouquet, I would say. Um, I found them to be kind of similar, except this one is the lighter, more easygoing, uh, milder version that you can wear kind of every day, you know? Um, it's still very dressy, don't get me wrong, you know, this is one of my favourite date night scents, but compared to Long Comes Oud Bouquet, it's really quite, um, it's just softer, it's, it's easier to wear in my opinion and things like that. So that's why I kind of prefer this one. Um, I don't really feel the need to purchase Oud Bouquet. For a while I did want that perfume, but when I picked this one up, I kind of felt like it gave me what I would want from a fragrance like Oud Bouquet, except this one's easier to wear and things like that. So um, let's go through the main accords. We have Rose, Warm Spicy, Soft Spicy, Ooh, warm, spicy, and soft, spicy. <laughs> Floral, woody, powdery, musky, amber, sweet, and also leather. Leather? I wouldn't say I get leather from this, but anyway. Um, oh, my phone's being weird. Ah, here we go. So um, the notes themselves, we have pink pepper, of course, saffron, royal lily, bergamot, we have two different roses. So we have Bulgarian rose and May rose. We also have vanilla orchid, magnolia, sandalwood, amber, musk, and also patchouli. So, um, oh, this fragrance, you guys, honestly, the pink pepper note in here is so beautifully complemented by that rose. Um, and it just has this really uplifting, bright, sparkling quality to it that just reminds me of pink fireworks, dazzling in a midnight sky. That's honestly what this fragrance captures. Just very uplifting. It's it's sort of um, fizzy in a way, actually. It has this fizzy kind of texture to it, probably from the bergamot in here, which is quite strong. And it's just, bergamot is one of those notes that can actually, um, I think it can actually lift your mood as in it's quite well known for being a note that can actually change your mood in a good way. So the fact they have quite a lot of that in here, it would it would kind of explain to me why it has that um, happy sort of mood about it. Very, very flirty. It's kind of got this um, cheeky, like giggly, flirty kind of vibe about it. Another reason why I love this for a date night, it really is, it's one of those feel-good fragrances. It kind of gives me a bit of confidence as well, I would say. Very alluring, very magnetic. It's a type of... Just that type of really pretty fragrance. I really like this one. This was actually a total um, blind buy for me, believe it or not, pretty much as soon as it was released. I picked this one up, like I just kind of knew I had to have it. Um, 
after I saw some of the reviews, when I looked at the notes, I just had a feeling that I would really like it, and of course I do. So yeah, I would recommend this one again if you're looking for something kind of almost like Oud Bouquet, but pared back a bit, just a bit more relaxed, easygoing, easy to wear, very, very ultra feminine, a nice, nice kind of sweetness, very nice and sweet. <sighs> kind of woody, sparkling, uplifting, flirty. And the rose in here, it's not super like loud, it's not really dominating, it's really well balanced with the other notes. Um, the top notes are really quite strong, like they almost stay throughout the whole fragrance. Um, like the bergamot and the pink pepper, they do stay for quite a long time in my opinion. And um, the woody notes are quite strong as well, so it's really well balanced with those notes and the rose. Oh, and it's just it's such a good one, you guys. So really nice rosy scent, and that is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. Next up today, we have a really nice rosy fragrance in my collection. This is that beautiful pink, dewy, realistic rosy scent, and it is Chloe Low. This fragrance right here, and um, this is such a gorgeous fragrance for the warmer months, let me tell you. It has that nice cooling effect. Um, feminine and dewy and kind of watery in nature as well. So the main accords we have citrus, rose, floral, mossy, woody, earthy, fruity, musky, tropical and powdery, which to be quite honest with you, I don't know if I agree with those um, main accords. I wouldn't say that it's citrusy at all and I wouldn't really say that it's mossy, wouldn't say that it's tropical. I mean to me it's basically a dewy, watery, delicate, rosy kind of fragrance, but anyway. So the notes themselves, we have rose, grapefruit, lychee, damask, rose, magnolia, oak moss, cedar, musk and amber. And I think the grapefruit, funnily enough, I don't really get grapefruit in here. Now that note can be really bothersome to me a lot of the time because it's very harsh. Uh, particularly in, say, the likes of uh, Angel Muse. The grapefruit in there, I couldn't actually stand it because it was so sharp and harsh in nature, but I don't really get that from this at all. This is a very nice, smooth, cooling, calming scent, so I actually don't get much grapefruit in here. I do get a lot of that lychee, though. So to me, it's primarily a lychee and rose fragrance that transports me to a crystal blue lake, in a forest clearing with rose petals scattered over top and things like that. It's just wonderful, you guys. Really nice option for a very rosy perfume, but again, somehow this isn't too much to me. Like, it's really rosy, but because it has that aquatic nature to it and it has that really strong lychee, like, fruitiness, again, it just balances it out really well and it's just a very nice, easy to wear, cooling and calming scent, and that is Chloe Lowe. Next up today we have Longcom's E Doll here in this little miniature bottle. Very cute indeed. Um, I like this one, but I don't like it enough to pick up a full bottle, but it's still a really good rosy uh, fragrance for every day. And uh, the notes of this perfume, we have pear and bergamot in the top. We have um, Turkish rose and rose de mai and also Indian Jasmine in the heart notes, and then in the base notes we have White Musk and Vanilla. So to me, I do get quite a lot of that pear, and I get a lot of that rose as well. I think the Jasmine in here kind of helps to modernise the fragrance a bit, you know, like it does definitely balance out the rosiness. But I think the thing that slightly bothered me about this one if I'm remembering correctly, I think I remember the musk being a little bit scratchy in here. And it wasn't that well blended, I don't think. Um, there were just a few things that bothered me a little bit about this perfume, so I don't love it, but I still wanted to mention it. Just in case um, some of you wanted to check this one out. I mean, I know a lot of people do like this, and um, I'm not saying it's a bad perfume, it's just not one of my favourites but I think it would be one to check out nonetheless if you're looking for. I've just sloshed some of that on myself. Oh no, was I already wearing? Right, I'm just gonna have to make it my scent of the day, aren't I? Gosh, imagine flailing your hands around when this doesn't even have its lid on. Nice one. Well, at least I can smell it strongly now and talk about it for you guys. Um, yeah, it went all over my hands there. 
Yeah, I mean, it is, it's pleasant. I mean, upon the first application, I'm getting a lot of that pear, I'm getting the rose, I'm getting quite a lot of jasmine, actually. In fact, I'm maybe even getting like equal parts of jasmine and rose. It's a pleasant fragrance if you're just looking for something maybe even just to go to work, just to smell nice, you know, if you just want to smell clean and floral and bright and professional even, just pleasant, you know, this would be a really great fragrance for that. Um, again, I don't know if I really love it or like it that much, but I still think it's a nice uh, rosy perfume nonetheless. Uh, quite modern as well because of the like jasmine and the pear in there as well, giving it that like fresher mood about it. Um, but anyway, so that's Long Combs Idol, a fragrance that I'm probably going to be stinking of all day now. <laughs> And now I have two perfumes left, you guys. These are my top two rose perfumes in my whole collection. These are quite strong with the rose note, I would say. And um, yeah, so we're now at the top two rosiest fragrances. And um, so next up, I'm gonna talk about Delina Exclusive, of course, this beauty in my collection that I couldn't be without. I just absolutely love this fragrance in that glamorous um, princess bottle. Who wouldn't like that, you know? This fragrance, oh, this fragrance is unreal, you guys. It's unreal. Please let me know in the comments if you have tried this one. Um, I have tried the original Delina and this is the exclusive that I own and love. Um, I've done a comparison video on the two actually, which you might find useful if you're trying to decide on which one might be for you, but um, I certainly really prefer the exclusive. I suppose an honourable mention would be the original Delina. I mean, that's that's a very rosy perfume as well. It's just not one that I own here. Um, so that would be like my honourable mention, of course, because it is another rosy fragrance. But this is the Delina that I absolutely adore. It's a very... Oh, it's just it's got so many layers to it, you guys. This fragrance tells a story. It's so romantic. It has so many layers to it. It's it's quite um, emotive to me for some reason. Like, you know, you spray it and it's very bright and fruity and slightly fresh. And then it kind of lures you into the, the rosy heart notes. And um, eventually you kind of get these deeper nuances in there that you didn't really expect necessarily from the fragrance. So it does have a little whisper of oud and incense in there, which I think really anchors the scent and it gives it a lot of that nice depth. It also has some vanilla as well. Oh, it's just absolutely divine, you guys. So we have lychee, pear and bergamot, then Turkish rose, oud and incense and vanilla, amber, and woody notes in the base. So overall, this is just a gorgeous fragrance. And the other thing that's really worth mentioning as well about this one is how strong it is and how far it actually projects. You know, this is a really strong fragrance. You don't need to spray very much of it and it's definitely going to last you all day. People will be able to smell it on you and it's just absolutely fantastic. So that one is Delina Exclusive. Probably my favourite rose perfume in my whole collection, actually. I would say this is my number one favourite and it's just absolutely wonderful. And last up today, but by no means least, in fact, this is probably the strongest rose perfume I have in my whole collection. We have Very Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli from Meleg Perfumes in this really awesome old worldy style bottle, which I think is really fun. Just look at that, you guys. Um, so <laughs> you would kind of guess from the name of what's gonna be in this perfume, you know? I would say if you're not a fan of patchouli, then probably sample first or um, yeah, just be, be aware of this one because it does have that patchouli in here. Now, again, this is a very, very strong perfume. In fact, I would say it's stronger than Delina Exclusive. So um, I'm actually hesitant to spray any. I'll just spray one little spray, but this is really strong, you guys. Like, um. So upon the first application, you get that really juicy, sweet cherry with the rose. And I remember um, when I've worn this fragrance, the more it dries down, the more complex and rich it becomes and it almost like gets stronger the longer that you have it on, which is very 
interesting and kind of unusual actually. Yeah, this is a very decadent, um, intoxicating, rich, heavy, heavy perfume. It's really, it's kind of earthy as well, actually. It has that, um, if you think of how something might look, this, this fragrance smells opaque to me. You know, it's, it's thick, it is, um, earthy, it's sweet, slightly syrupy, it smells very natural because he uses um, lots of natural ingredients in his perfumes as well. And it's just, it's a really strong rose perfume. You really do not need to spray a lot of this. I made that mistake actually. I thought, oh cool, um, you know, do my usual application or whatever. And I was absolutely gobsmacked at how strong this perfume was. So I would never spray that much again. I would maybe even just do two sprays in the air and walk through it and you're more than good to go. Mm, but that is very cherry rose chocolate patchouli, a really gorgeous, strong and um, unapologetic scent from Melig Perfumes. So there we have it everyone. I really hope you enjoyed my video about the rose perfumes I have in my collection. Let me know what you think of this note. Is it a note that you enjoy? Are you quite cautious about it? You know, would you maybe choose more of the subtler rosy scents or would you go all out and um, go for a very heavy rosy perfume? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I always love hearing from you. Um, and I do just wanna say actually a huge thanks to all of you. Like. I have been absolutely loving uh, reading all of your beautiful comments recently. I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to share your thoughts and it just, it really means so much to me and you guys are just amazing. So thank you for all of your support on my channel. Um, recently, like I've all the time, but I have really noticed it recently as well. And um, welcome as well to all of my new like subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching and um, all of that. <laughs> so thanks again, you guys. Take care and I can't wait to see you again very soon on my next video. Bye.